Hello. Keep doing it. Hello. Funny, I'm left-handed, but yet when I tip my hat, I'm so tempted to do it with my right. Anyway. Hello. David Bradley here. Um, I have made mention that I might have got something in the last little while. And of course, I'm trying not to get anything. But things happen. So, what do I have here? I got a box. And in the box, I will find my never actually taken this out of here. Oh, okay. Oh. A Commodore 8010 acoustic coupling modem. Let's look at the end. That is where you will find the little lights. That's where the phone goes. And here is the magic. The IEEE interface. So that when you get this all gathered together, that you could have your Commodore PET connected through an IEEE cable to a disk drive, and then daisy chain that to a printer, and daisy chain that to a modem. And once you have a modem, the whole world opens up to you. My brother and I used to run a bulletin board, and of course this modem, as you see, there is no direct connection to the telephone line because, of course, back when telephone companies said, oh, no, no, you cannot, you cannot connect more, you cannot. It was even a sin to have an extra phone in your house without telling them. And, of course, they rented you phones. They wouldn't sell you phones so that you could pay over and over and over for the privilege of using a phone. And the phone, very likely... they say you can have it in whatever color you want as long as it's black so here is a phone that came with this modem you know the cool thing i like about these phones i'm actually just looking at the cord of course it's funny it's got a cord on it that's very very long and of course the little nubby thing here that would make sure that this doesn't slip out it is broken of course and the cord has that sticky feeling of something that's been in a box for quite a while and the rubber band is probably about to break because it's been here too long but hang on, i'm going to move this close there is a sound that is magic and i remember this from being a little person at the cottage and hearing my grandmother dial the phone I'll, I'll dial my what would have been my home number so that maybe maybe that would have been what my grandmother was dialing to have a word with my parents Anyway, this is a typical Bell phone. It is. And it was quite handy, essential, to use such a modem as this. Now, of course, things have changed. People plug all kinds of things into phone lines these days. There's a good thing on here, on this cup here, which I know you probably, well, maybe if I hold it just right, you can see. There's the word cord helps one make sure that they get the phone in the right way. Anyway, I have not plugged this in. It did not come with a power supply, but I have other power supplies. This box can be recycled. This packing material well, probably I, I'm a, I have a tendency to hold on to this stuff and then of course I, I squirrel it away and then I don't know where it is and then when I need to ship something I don't know where it is and the cycle continues.
And, so, and of course, when I go and find it by accident, because I find the box that I put it in, I'm, I don't have anything to ship. So, I'll see. Maybe this time it'll be different. This is certainly heavy duty. And it doesn't break when you push on it. It's a miracle. Anyway, what do I really need here? Is the modem, otherwise known as a modulator, demodulator. And of course, way back when, in the early days of bulletin boards, and my brother and I did run a bulletin board, um, there had to be a special circuit made to answer the phone. And then the modem and the modems would talk and then everything would be dandy and away they'd go. Um, and then of course we got into other modems made by, well, uh, you know what, how much, made by Commodore or just branded by Commodore, like, or just, how would you put it? Um, they went to a company that made things and said, yo, well, chances are Commodore just went and said, yeah, we want to buy your company. And away they went. Vertical integration. Anyway. How's that look? Anyway, they are... I don't know how many of these were made. Oh, maybe there's a serial number. Well, the number on this one is H100602. So does that mean they made 100,602? I don't know, or is this the 600 second? I don't know. It has all the cylinder rubber feet. Anyway, the other thing about these things is, see, when you're talking on the phone, hello, how are you doing? Um, the microphone, there was, I think there was carbon and stuff in these things, and I'll see if I can open this. I can. And these little things in here would get moved around. There it is. There's how connect plugs on. They move around normally when you're talking and the phone gets hung up and other such things. When running a bulletin board, the phone sits in the modem for days, weeks, months, never gets shuffled around. So the, the carbon inside of the phone parts that listen and send out, as in the earpiece and the uh, where you would talk, things get a little squirrely. So um, I remember we, about once a week, when we ran the Bradley Bullers bullet board system on a phone and a TED modem, every little while we would take the phone, maybe about a week or so, sometimes more, we would just take the phone out when no one was on the board and then tap, tap, tap it on the desk to sort of shake things up and then remarkably the carrier signal got louder and things worked better um mind you we rare it rarely got bad because of course we, this was just one of those things and i suppose in the new automated days of things or maybe even back then we might have built some little contraption maybe like you see on battle bots where there might be a little hammer on on some sort of contraption and a timer that every day or so might come rap, 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 tapping on the phone. Or who knows, maybe we would have made something out of an alarm clock that didn't ring the alarm, but smacked the phone. I don't know, anyway. We just took it out, smacked it up. And sometimes people would send us messages, you know, say, oh, carry it kind of low, might want to beat up that phone a bit. And so we would. Anyway, this does look like to be a very fine example um, cosmetically and, uh, you know, otherwise it would be, even if it doesn't work, this is a museum piece. This is magic. It is <laughs> hardly anything in here. Very clean. Um, as I said, these modems, they were in use for a while. And then once other things that plug directly into the phone line, like the big modem and other things came along. They were put in boxes with phones and never to be seen again. Much like this one. Um, but, you know, it was part of the magic of 
picking up the phone and dialing your favorite board. And of course, generally, most of the CBSs were a one line thing. And there was no auto dialers for these things, so you just have to pick it up. I love that sound. Dial the phone, listen for the carrier, make sure you have the motor right way around, put the phone in, and then watch the lights as the two computers began the conversation. And then the letters at 300 baud, which is about 30 characters a second, would come down the screen. And you could log in. And indeed, I, I used to write for Run Magazine. And I'm sure somewhere in there I said, you know, a computer is a fine thing. But once you're attached to a modem, it, it opens the world. Well, gee. Now, it, I mean, we don't call individual bulletin boards like we used to. It's the internet. And the internet, indeed, not only it can you reach the world, it has changed the world. Some would say for the better. Some, maybe not. Anyway, one last story. And I think I can reach over here and find what I need. Just a moment. Yes, I believe I can. I have here. Well, this isn't exactly what I wanted, but it will do. <coughs> so this is a PET to IEEE cable. This one could use a little cleaning. Things happen. Anyway, so this end, if you were not using um, a disk drive, I'm just going to use this because I've got it. But anyway, this would plug into the, the uh, IEEE port on the PET. And of course, you were supposed to attach this grounding thing that nobody did, but anyway. And this is the other end, and it would go into the modem. So I used to be, well, my brother and I, I don't know, I guess in some ways, I don't know, sorry, I'll put this on again. I triple E cable, back of the modem. Goes on, and then you can screw these things in for a tight, snug fit and not have to worry about the cable kind of coming a little askew, as they could do if somebody pushed on something and they weren't in and then of course things don't work well anyway i don't remember how old i was i think i was still in school and into bulletin boards and, and it's funny there was this fellow at the toronto board of education not the toronto district school board but the toronto board of education who we got to know because they had been wanting to run a bulletin board and no matter what they did they always had trouble and things didn't work and of course we got one going at our high school so we sometimes did demos. Anyway, he said whenever he did a demo, everything would go bad. So uh, anyway, I got a call. He was going to be doing this demo. Uh, I think it was on a Monday. I got a call over the weekend. It wasn't working. He was stunned, stymied, mystified. And so I got on my little motorcycle and I rode down to the head uh, head building of the Toronto Board of Education on a weekend. Um, I don't know if I, yeah, I think I've probably been there a couple times before. And there was Don Whitewood. And he was like, you gotta look at this thing. It's been working. Everything's been fine. And I gotta do this demo. And every time, I'm cursed. Every time I go to do a demo with, with one of these things, it just doesn't go well. So I said, okay, let me look at it. So he left me in this little kind of room where it was supposed to be set up. It was kind of a workroom. And there was a pet a disk drive, a printer, and a modem. And there was a program, and I'm not sure what bulletin board program or what communication thing, or I don't know what it was. But anyway, it was all turned on. And I thought, well, I better check. Now, going back a step or two, I would say the best way to connect these things, if you're able, is the PET to the disk drive, the disk drive to the printer, and the disk drive to the modem. In other words, yes, daisy chain them, but don't just have it go, like have the disk drive as sort of ground zero or, you know, the place that things are attached. Because these things with the screw things, these things also will let you screw things in. Anyway, so first step, 
check all the connections. So I check, and indeed the PET is plugged in, the discharge is plugged in, the printer is plugged in, they all have power, the modem has its power supply, um, everything is, you know, it comes on, it squeals, it does its thing, and I said, well, okay, let's check the IEEE cables. So I go to check, and what do I find? The modem. There's, a cable, there's an IEEE cable that runs right to it, but it's not plugged in. So I kind of said, ah! Anyway, it was not a very long visit. And of course, um, I, in those days of the pet community, I did not expect nor ask for any money for anything to do this. It was just, there's a man with a pet in trouble. I must go. Anyway, so double check your connections. And from what I heard, his demo went quite well. Um, imagine that. Now, the other thing, of course, with, with things like this is um, if you are having trouble, it's not a bad thing to, you know, just switch the cables around and see. And if really, if, if, if things were not going well, I mean, disconnect the printer. You really don't need it. Not for such a demo as that. Um, although back in the day, we, uh, we didn't want to use tons and tons of paper, but we did have this printer that I'm talking in front of hooked up to the bulletin board and it would it would do, it would print some sort of a log of who had been on I believe I, I just remember because it was in my bedroom I remember you know you'd hear I mean it had the, of course the ringer was disconnected but you just hear the noises of the thing going like the drive spinning and you see a gentle green glow and it's funny I'm surprised in some ways that we didn't find a way on the PET to turn the power off on the monitor, which would not have been tough, but we just never did it. Um, and we'd see the gentle green glow as the screen filled up with characters, and you'd hear the drive spinning, and you'd hear the carrier, and when it was all done, there would be just this one quick burst on the printer, and then it would happen all again, over and over and over and over and over. Anyway, funny thing about this phone here, it has, the old phone number from way back when, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And I wonder, was this a bulletin board number or was this just, you know, somebody's home number and they just called up? I don't know. It's also twisted. But that, I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to remove it. Well, I might try and shift it straight. I don't know if I can even do that, but I don't think I can. Because that is part of the history of this telephone. And who knows who has, if anybody has this number now. It, it, it is from Toronto. It's a 416 number. I will leave it at that. The phone actually looks in pretty good shape, although there is some yellowing of the numbers and other such things. But, you know, it's 50 years old, maybe. Maybe more. Maybe. Is there anything on the bottom? Well, there's an adjustment for the loud bell. Or not. And made in Canada. Oh, and there is a number on it, 56, but I don't know if that has anything to do with the year. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. And of course, a very, very, very long cable with a broken end. So, at some point, I will find, and I know where there's a box with other such things from the old bulletin board days, I will find a power supply, and I will plug this in. Oh. And see if it squeals. So, there it is. A piece of Commodore history. Really, this kind of thing on the people side of things, not the corporation side of things. This kind of device is the beginning 
of what eventually became the internet, telecommunications. It all started in things like this. And that's all I have to say about that. So, I will continue to take little steps one at a time. There was a thing I've seen online that is don't discourage anybody making progress no matter how slow. Well, it's been pretty slow lately. Mm. But I'm making progress. Or progress, as the case may be. And I hear something is happening on my phone. So thank you very much for coming. Stay tuned. I have other things to do upstairs where I've been filming, and I will continue to get this done so the family portrait can be done and I can start to do more videos on how to fix a pet and make the tough decisions of what pets will live and what pets will become donors. But nothing will be wasted. Anyway, guess we better check the phone. Hello? No. No, Dave's not here. Bye for now.